Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be starting a pretty exciting uh, little project on our 2012 Toy Hauler Stealth uh, by Force River. We're going to be installing our solar panels and getting everything hooked up. Uh, most of the stuff you can get for pretty inexpensive. I'm going to leave a link to everything we bought here down in the description of this video. There's a few components you need to buy. Um, obviously your solar panel we're going to be using a 100 watt uh, Coleman. You also need a way to route those cables into the trailer and we're going to be using what's called a uh, cable entry box. We also need a fuse coming down our two lines. I'm going to choose to put a switch in here as well. I want to be able to disconnect my panel in case there's an issue with it. Obviously you need a solar charge controller. I chose to go with the Renogy Adventurer. The main reason why I chose this one, other than it getting really good reviews, is that you can flush mount this. It'll make it look more like it was a factory installed option. And then I'm going to show you how we're going to choose to route it to the battery. So um, all of this has to be routed right to the battery. So I'll show you a couple of the components that we bought. So again, we're using the Renogy Adventurer Solar Charge Controller flush mount. It's got a nice USB front on it so you can charge your phone from there. It's got a number of different options on here. It can do all kinds of different batteries. If we choose to in the future add another panel or two, this should be able to handle it no problem. We are going to be using 10 gauge wire. It's pretty thick. This is the MC4 standard connection for most solar you'll find. You don't have to use these. I, I choose to use these because they're really simple. They're not that expensive and they're kind of a universal connection for solar panels. These are the inline fuses we're going to use. We have two of them. You can see they use standard fuses. You want to basically match your amperage with what your charge controller can do. So in this case it's a 30 amp con charge controller so we need to do 30 amp fuses. Now let's talk about switches for a second. This isn't something that's required. This is something I'm electing to do. It'll be a lot easier for me just to disconnect that. And then if I ever have any questions or something's acting finicky, um, anything at all, my wife and I can very easily just turn off the system and then start doing our own troubleshooting. Probably one of the toughest parts about installing a solar system is just finding out how you're going to route all the wires through your trailer. Because you have to go through the roof, down into a panel, the, so the solar charge controller, and then ultimately down to the battery. So in this case, this is my entry door, and I have a very, very thick, I believe that's a six gauge, uh, battery disconnect, which is a positive lead. I have my converter right here, and just by taking out this drawer here, I can see I've actually got a hole that's already punched through to the underneath of the trailer. I think the easiest way for me to wire this is going to be mounting my solar charge controller probably in this area right here. And I'm going to run my cabling down through this wall and probably tie into my battery disconnect the 12 volt uh, positive and then probably drop my ground cable through that existing hole and just reseal it. And then to get my cables up through the roof I've got this little closet here I'm going to remove this panel and see what it'll take to get just right through there in between basically these two pieces of wood through the roof. And then my actual panel itself will probably be mounted, you know, somewhere above this area here. With any kind of a charge control system or PV system, you want the shortest amount of cable possible so you get the least amount of voltage drop. So we've got this panel off now. You can see when we pull back, here's all my connections. We've even got a vent pipe here. That could always be an option if you wanted to go through a vent pipe. Might be kind of a risk to just drill right there because you could drill right through some of these wires and not even realize it. So here's what I'll be using on the top side of the roof. I'm just using these brackets to actually mount the panel. And then here is my entry box. This is made by GoPower. I chose this one because it has the MC4 connections 
already on it. You're also going to need something to clean the roof. Most RVs are going to have some kind of a rubber or EPDM uh, type roof. This works really well. You just want to make sure it has a nice clean surface to bond to when you make your seals. So I'm up here on the roof now. I've uh, found where I think approximately where I'm going to be placing this uh, entry box. I've just sprayed a little bit of this cleaner here. You can see how quickly this uh, gets it nice and clean. To make things a little bit easier, I went ahead and just decided to remove the rest of this panel inside so we can get access to where we're going to be punching through the roof. In my opinion, this is probably going to be the hardest part of the installation, just punching through the roof and making sure we don't hit any of these wires. So I'm going to be taking my drill and I'm not going to be just drilling straight through because there's two layers we have to go through. We have to go through basically this panel and then the actual roof on top. And if I just punch all the way through, yeah, I'd get through the roof, but I don't know what cables may be pushing through there. So I'm going to take my drill and drill just this a hole right here. And as soon as I punch through, I'm going to stop drilling. Now it'll give me a better view to make sure I'm not going to be pushing through any wires. So I drilled a small hole there and I can take my little pick tool, stick it up there. I'm feeling around for any wires and I can feel it's straight up to the roof section. So now I feel comfortable to go ahead and punching all the way through into the roof. Now my roof, it's not a walkable roof. If it's a walkable roof, there's going to be plywood or OSB along the entire section. Mine's not. Basically I just have wood trusses that go this way and then a material that's you know not much thicker than that over that and then you have your rubber roof basically going on top of that so it's important that I find studs to mount some of this stuff but I'm gonna go ahead and punch through now to the top of the roof from there and start running some wires so you can see I've uh, started one hole fishing one one wire through and here's my second hole and there we go. Now you can see we have our two wires fed through there. It's good that these holes are nice and tight against this wire. We're going to be adding silicone or some kind of a sealant to here before we secure this to kind of add a double protection because then we're going to be sealing around this box as well to make sure it's nice and sealed and there's no chance of a leak. This is what I'm going to use to seal the entry box. This is a Dicor product, self-leveling, so basically you squeeze it on. It's going to flatten out just like what you see from the factory on how they seal all the openings in the roof. I'm just going to lift this up and uh, spray this sealant along those wires. Okay, now I'm just going through, securing these with screws. It's nice and secure. We just need to seal this up. Don't be bashful with this stuff. Just go along the whole level, the whole area, get it nice and sealed. I'm gonna put the camera down while I do this. All right, this is what it looks like uh, immediately after basically putting that product on. So here's what it looks like after it uh, skins over. So what I'm doing here now, I've got the dimensions of this flush mount charge controller. I have the approximate area, or the approximate shape of how I want it. Now I'm just trying to fit it in there. I need to make it just a little bit bigger. Because I removed the panel on the back side, I can see that I'm in no danger of cutting wires. I'm able to move these out of the way to make that cut. To make that cut, I simply took my drill, drilled in all four corners and now I'm just using a jigsaw to make that cut. Pretty basic tools if you don't have them one of your neighbors does. You want it to be snug but not tight and that gives you a nice clean look to it. This is one of two inline fuses I'm going to be using. My plan with this is 
This is going to connect into the solar controller right there. This end is going to be connected to a switch um, against this wall right here. And the reason why I'm connecting them here is because if I need to replace this fuse, it should be pretty easy just to unscrew this panel from the front and pull that panel off and access that fuse without having to take off this interior panel again. To make these connections, it's really simple. You can see PV, meaning your panel. You unscrew these terminals. Now that wire sits in there. Then you just screw it down tight. Now that one's in, I'm going to repeat the same process for the battery positive on this second terminal here with the identical fuse. To make a connection to my switch, I just got these inexpensive switches. I'm just going to make those connections using this crimp connector. So crimp that on. And I think I'm also going to add in a disconnect for the battery. So I'll just repeat this process twice. To get your switch mounted, it's really simple. This little collar is just going to screw off. You're going to find a drill bit that's basically the same size as the threads. In this case, this is a half inch. You can drill it wherever you want that. Take that collar off. Push you through the hole. And on the back side, you're going to re-secure that collar. That'll hold it in place. Then you make your electrical connections on the back. So now it's time to mount our solar panel. So what I have here, this is my box that the solar panel came in. It's pretty much the exact dimensions of the solar panel. So I have it up here on my roof, looking at where I should mount it. You want to avoid going too far forward, because that's where all of the junk from the road when you're traveling is going to come up and hit. And you also want to try to locate closer to where your entry box is, because of course we have to deal with voltage drop on DC power. I have to find where my studs line up. So take some time, figure out where you want to go. You want to avoid trying to go behind your AC units. The reason we, being is because that'll cast a shadow on your panel. You won't get the most efficiency out of it. All right, we've got her all mounted here. I was only able to use uh, one screw per mount just because I don't have a stud underneath there or right there. I'm going to call that good. I'm not going to show it, but we need to come through here and seal this up again. Kind of do it all the way around. I'm not going to show that, but make sure you do that. So we've run our cables. They are connected into that entry box via the MC4 connectors. But my solar panel did not come with the MC4 connectors. So instead of adding MC4 connectors to here, I'm just going to cut these ends off and splice them. I'm going to be doing it just with some normal splice connectors. And then I'm adding some of this uh, shrink, shrink wrap around it. So make those connections. The manufacturer doesn't want these connected under load. So make sure you disconnect your solar charger over there before you make these connections. I'll show you what the final install looks like once I'm done with that. Okay. We've made those connections here, and so we put that shrink tubing on it. It's going in there, connected there. Don't forget to reseal this, and then also do some kind of cable management. I'm going to buy some just little uh, 3M little hooks. Basically, they're like command hooks. They just go on here with uh, double-sided tape, adhesive. Just make sure they're not flopping around in the wind. Do some kind of cable management there. All right, back inside. How I am getting a 12 volt, I'm wiring into my, our existing disconnect, and I'm wiring this into the constant, not the switched. So there's going to be a constant 12 volt going up to here, and that is why we're going to have an independent off switch for that. So this is really simple. I just put on a crimp on ring, bring it through there for me to bring that up. So now I've got this, I'm just going to strip this off, put on another crimp on spade connector, go to the back of my switch here, 
This will be my disconnect switch. And then the other side of that goes into the controller. And uh, for obvious reasons, during this time, make sure all of your batteries are disconnected, everything, you don't have uh, electricity going anywhere. Get a little safety officer if you to double check everything. My little safety officer is uh, in there sleeping right now, but she'll be out here in a little bit. Now we need to run our negative. Normally, it's pretty easy to identify where negative is because it comes in as a big old thick cable. See where that copper wire is? And you follow that down, and it's actually connected to all of the neutral wires coming out of the AC side of the box. Once it goes through the floor, it terminates directly to the frame. So this can be used as a, a 12 volt ground. So all I'm gonna do now is run a cable alongside our positive straight down and connect into one of the open terminals right there. Okay, my wiring is complete. So, so this will be the first time turning it on, kind of checking, make sure everything works. So you want to make sure that this is selected to your type of battery. In this case, we have a flooded battery. There we go. So it shows flooded here. That's the type we have. This is how you go through your menu. Gel, lithium. We're going to stay with flooded. Push and hold enter. Now you're good. So it shows our battery level right there. 7.9 volts. Now we're going to turn on our PV cell. Now it shows our battery is charging. That's our voltage now. It'll thumb through and get to amperage. 4.6 amps right now. We got our panel back installed. What I did here is I cut that on the table saw. So this top part is stapled in place. This bottom part I just secured with screws because I want to be able to access behind here in the future. We're going to do a little bit more cable management on this, kind of tie that up, get a little bit better. Our safety officer has done a good inspection. She says it's safe, good to go. And now you can see here everything's working as it should. So that concludes this uh, installation and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button because I'm gonna be adding an inverter to this existing system coming up soon that'll probably be my next video so if you want to see how that's done make sure you follow the dad bod workshop thanks for watching please hit the subscribe button and uh, we will see you on the next one